What to wear in a crime scene? The crime investigators should put on gloves, masks, personal protective equipment, and shoe covers before accessing where the incident happened, as this will prevent crime scene and evidence from being contaminated and the crime investigators will not leave any traces behind. This will be presented in court, and if you do not follow this, our DNA can be mixed in the crime scene. We can be suspected as one of the culprits and can make the evidence be contaminated. Don't forget to bring your camera and your collection kit. Take photographs of the entire scene and the pieces of evidence as soon as you arrive. Take note that the evidence should not be moved or altered. Instead, it should be photographed beforehand. Always bear in mind the three methods of photographing evidence. The overall, mid-range, and close-up. Always be cautious with the body and the evidence, as we should always follow the golden rule. At the crime scene, do not touch, alter, move, or transfer any object unless it has been properly marked and photographed. After photographing the raw situation, label each piece of evidence with send up numbers and take another photograph. Always be cautious with the body and the evidence. When handling guns, always be careful since it can be loaded, so we must remove the magazine first. Put the gun in the box and attach it with a plastic tie. Make sure that the tie goes behind the trigger. Place your initials in the magazine using a stylus. Put it in a ziplock and seal. Right after, place your initials in the frame of the gun using the stylus. Cover the box with the gun in the magazine and seal it properly. Mark it with your initials date and time, and what kind of evidence it is. Don't forget to sign the sealed part of the evidence. Swab the surface with a sterile cotton zip when collecting blood. Leftover moisture can encourage the growth of DNA-destructing bacteria and fungi, and biological evidence should not be stored in plastic or airtight containers. A swab box container should be used to store the swab blood. After you've collected the sample, properly seal the evidence and label it with your initials, the date and time, and the type of evidence. Do this for each piece of evidence you've covered, and don't forget to sign the seal of the evidence. Collect evidence containing critical information such as a wallet, because it may contain the victim's or perpetrator's personal information which is vital in determining who the victim or offender is. Place the evidence you've covered in a ziplock bag, seal it and label it with your initials, the date and time, and the type of evidence you've covered. Do not forget to sign the sealed part of the evidence. Underwear is a crucial piece of evidence, especially if the crime involves sexual assault, as it could contain the perpetrator's sperm. Swap the surface with a sterile cotton tip for collecting sperm. Again, biological evidence should not be packaged in plastic or sealed containers, because residual moisture can encourage the growth of dna destructive bacteria and fungi. The swab semen should be packaged in a swab box or container. Seal it and label it with your initials, the date and time, and the type of evidence you've got there. Don't forget to sign the sealed part of the evidence. Collect the underwear without washing it, place it in a ziplock bag, seal it tightly, and label it with your initials, the date and time, and the type of evidence. Do not forget to sign the sealed part of the evidence. The ability to retain data and monitor calls in a cell phone makes it a significant piece of evidence. It can track your messages, especially if you are being threatened with death. When collecting cell phones, place them in a ziplock bag, lock it tightly, and label it with your initials, the date and time, as well as the type of the evidence. Do not forget to sign the sealed part of the evidence. When collecting a knife, make sure it's securely safe before putting it in the box. 
Drop it in a Ziploc bag for extra protection. Seal it, add your initials, the date and time, and a description of what kind of proof it is. Don't forget to sign the sealed part of the evidence. Swab all blood stains in the crime scene, whether it comes from the culprit or the victim, and swab the surface with a sterile cotton tip for collecting the blood. As again, biological evidence should not be packaged in plastic or sealed containers because residual moisture can encourage the growth of DNA destructive bacteria and fungi. A swab box container should be used to store the swab blood. After you've collected the blood sample, properly seal the evidence and label it with your initials, the date and time, and the type of evidence. Do not forget to sign the sealed part of the evidence. Following the collection, marking, tagging, and packaging and correct marking of evidence will now keep it safe by placing it in a clean box. Seal it and add your initials as well as the date and time. Simply fill out who obtained it by and from using initials or signatures when transferring it to another custodian. Include the date and time as well. Sensitive Content Disclaimer the following scenarios are not true. This is just for academic purposes only. The documentation, collection, marking, tagging, packaging, and preservation of evidence in a crime scene. The following evidence was gathered after the rough investigation of the crime scene. Evidence number one, a gun. Evidence number two, blood stain on the floor. Evidence number three, wallet. Evidence number four, an underwear containing sperm. Evidence number five, a cell phone. Evidence number six, a bloody knife. Evidence number seven, another blood smear on the floor. i